recently had the opportunity to visit an investment and trading firm. My host gave me a tour. And along the tour, we went by some conference rooms that had poker tables. Now these poker tables had stacks of poker chips on them, indicating that there were ongoing games. And my host explained, you see, poker and trading actually are quite similar in terms of strategy. See, losing in poker, losing in poker can happen and doesn't necessarily indicate or signal a bad decision. See, the firm wanted to teach their employees this type of thinking, this type of decision making. But they didn't say, we'll have a class for you to teach you this skill. You see, they recognized that learning needs to be integrated. They recognized that learning is best when it's connected to application and when done in teams. The tour continued. And next we came to the trading floor. And my host shared with me another interesting phenomenon. He shared with me that on the trading floor they work in teams. There's teams of traders and technologists. Technologists being computer scientists uh, or systems designers. And it used to be that the ratio on the teams was three traders for every one technologist. But now, now there's three technologists for every one trader. You see, that's based on the realization that in today's world, in today's world, we need more systems thinkers. Does our current education system recognize these trends? Or is it failing our students by not preparing them properly with the skills they need in this world? See, we need to be critical of ideas. We certainly can be skeptical of new ones. But we must never be cynical. Critical analysis requires us to think through things in a really, really important way. New ideas. Our Mesora, our tradition, doesn't trump failure, though. And our system is failing our children. Failure drives Mesora. It drives the way we do things. I once heard Philip Schlechty, the great educational reformer, say that what holds up educational improvement, what holds up change in the education field is that there are too many people saying, yeah, but, and not enough people saying, what if? What if we thought about education the way in which the trading firm thought about business? What if? What if? instead of treating formal, informal, and experiential education as entirely separate fields, we looked at them and said, let's take the best of all of them and provide the best learning opportunities for our children. We should be thinking about bringing the poker table, if you will, into the classroom, into the school, and bringing the teaching into the game. Too often we compartmentalize. Too often we treat methods in distinct fashion. When we think about education, we also must not be dependent on the medium. We need to be considering what the most effective and efficient way of educating our children is, irrespective of whether it's online, offline, or blended, whether it's synchronous, asynchronous, or hybrid. We need to be thinking about online education and blended education because it provides opportunities for our children for self-paced learning and also for teacher-guided learning. The teacher doesn't disappear in the model. The teacher has tools for better decision-making in the model, more data about student preferences and patterns of learning, more opportunities to assess their outcomes and make better planning decisions because of it. They're better teachers because of the technology. But it's not just about the technology. The value of technology is that we can reimagine education. We can reimagine teaching and learning. The Harvard Business School, many of us know it, as a leader in case study method of learning. You know what Harvard did? They said the case study is not working anymore. We need to do it differently. And now they're leaders in dynamic simulations putting the learner in the case. Open margin. 
open margin leverages social media. It leverages social media in order to be able to allow a reader to have their marginal notes and questions and comments available for anyone else reading the same text anywhere if they're following that reader. Imagine a classroom where it is that students can follow students as they're reading a text. Imagine a classroom where students can follow the teacher or many teachers. Imagine a yeshiva that's learning a certain text. Like many yeshivas, they learn the same text. Imagine building on the millennia of commentaries with our own commentaries in real time. Seeing how our texts develop through time and giving our children a bird's eye view of that development through technology as a tool. As we reimagine education, as we reimagine teaching and learning, we should think about the model that Amazon.com has. Amazon.com's mission is to be the most client, customer-centric company on Earth, where customers can buy anything online, anything. What if our education system was the most child-centric on Earth and provided opportunities for children to discover anything they want to learn, anything? What if it didn't only have the learning of the moment, but also it took from Amazon the idea of having multiple providers, multiple, pro multiple products, and maybe even the idea of making recommendations based on previous learning experiences. This individualized approach to education, it's not the future of education. It's the now of education. And doing anything short of utilizing these tools is the past of education. When we reimagine education and teaching and learning, we also need to think about who it is that is working with our children. Perhaps, like the trading firm, we should think differently about teams. What if our teams of teachers had a technologist on them, in addition to other staff? What could they do? What if they worked together to plan and to implement the learning for the students? What if they were able to develop ways in which to analyze the student learning and be able to plan and build apps and to build simulations and other learning tools for the students as the learning progresses, not just the product that we buy off the shelf? What if the students learn to program too? What if, just like teachers, we gave students a dashboard of learning in real time so that they can monitor their learning and see how they're advancing and make decisions about their own learning based on their previous learning? What if the students were part of the team? What if we took the students, the teachers, the leaders, the technologists, and others and put them together in order to be able to plan for teaching and learning? What if? We need to move from isolation to integration, not only in teaching and learning, but certainly that's a start. We need to also move from isolation to integration in our community. We have schools, for sure, but we also have camps, and we also have synagogues, and we also have youth programs, and we also have Israel trips, and we have many other educational opportunities. What if we looked to integrate all of them so that our children benefit from the best methods, the best medium, and the best environments for learning. The Rand Corporation did some research recently. And they found that a summer break costs a student one month of learning. Two months if you come from a low-income home. Two months. What if this integrated system was spread out over 12 months? Not just the academics, not just the formal education. 12-month school isn't about making everything about academics. It's about finding the right time and the right space for learning. What if, in addition to the educational institutions, we also integrated businesses? Many are already doing something like this with internships, 
But higher education has been ahead of the curve, and I think we can learn something from higher education too. We already have the uh, paradigm of a teaching hospital, and other fields are following suit. Other fields, such as education, school-university partnerships, Udacity, the online platform for massive open online courses, MOOCs, they partner with companies, giving the companies data on the learning from the students in their online classes so that the companies can find the best students and the students can find the best jobs. Chattanooga State, on its campus, has a partnership with Volkswagen. They have a Volkswagen Academy where they integrate engineering and application into one system. What if we had real world problems and challenges for our students? What if, not only academic, but social, emotional, and religious as well? But there's something else. Beyond the value of education here, there's also an economic value. There are many educational products in our community, as I said. But we have singularly focused on the school as the source of our economic challenges. We have a tuition crisis. But how many of you have been at a conversation where we've asked the same tough questions about the cost of camp and the cost of synagogue dues, the cost of youth programs, the cost of Israel trips? The issue is, is that we deal with our various educational programs in isolation, and we look to solve our problems in isolation too. There's a famous story of a group of men a group of blind men who unknowingly stumble upon an elephant. One touches the trunk and says he's found a snake. One touches the tusk and says he's found a spear. One touches a leg and says he's found a tree. One touches the side of the animal and says he's found a wall. And one touches the tail and says he's found the rope. Then a seeing person walks by and says, what are you doing with the elephant? At which point the blind men realize that they're blind. Our proverbial elephant in the room is that we treat our Jewish educational system exactly the same way. We compartmentalize it. We isolate the various components as opposed to integrate it. Max Planck, the German physicist who won the Nobel Prize because of developing quantum theory, says if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. We need to look at the total value and cost of our various educational products in our community. We need to think about the return on investment across the entire system. And then we need to build a better system with greater value, with a better economic platform, and with better return on investment. Will we be visionary enough to see the various component parts? Will we be visionary enough to see how the various pieces focus together? to be able to build a holistic system. It's not bound by time or space, not by grade levels or classrooms, by method or institutions, not by our current conception of what a school looks like or what a teacher is. What if, together, we brought down the silos to create this holistic reality for the future of our people? Thank you. Thank you.